Martin's Days of Pain. His name is known to millions, but few know of his trials and tribulations, how the nation's federal policing agency, the FBI, hounded him and tormented him until his dying day. He is lauded today, and a majestic statue stands in the Capitol, less than a mile from a building named for his nemesis, J. Edgar Hoover, who loathed him and taped his hotel rooms, his phones, and his friends. Hoover tried every day to destroy him. I speak, of course, of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. In his last year, after his Riverside speech in New York, he faced the betrayal of those he thought were his friends and allies, and the furious denunciation of the media. Why? Because at Riverside, he spoke against U.S. carnage in Vietnam, U.S. greed, and U.S. racism. He criticized capitalism, and everything changed. Everything. He was called irrelevant, out of touch, out of his depths, unaware of reality, and much, much more. The very media that once portrayed him in heroic lights turned the lights off, closed its pages, and covered their microphones. This isolation served to make him vulnerable to the forces that sought his destruction. That's who Martin Luther King was in the twilight of his life, hounded, harassed, and harried by his government. Let us not forget. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. I'm Sensor. We have an excellent show for you today. It's Dr. Martin Luther King weekend. Dr. King's birthday was actually January the 15th. And we are going to talk about a wonderful book called Kingonomics. And that's by Dr. Rodney Sampson. But before we get started, I want to say that the views and opinions of the Arena Uncensored are not those of Comcast, its <coughs> affiliates, or staff, but those are of each individual guest. This book, Kingonomics, is an awesome read. It's by Dr. Rodney Sampson, 12 Innovative Currencies for Transforming Your Business and in and your life. And I want to tell you a little bit about Dr. Rodney Sampson. He has a bachelor's degree, a bachelor's of science degree from Tulane University, an MBA from Keller Graduate School of Management, attended Penn State University Medical School. He's a bishop, internationally renowned, and recipient of the Phoenix Award, the city of Atlanta's highest honor. I'd like to introduce to you my guest to my right, Dr. Rodney Sampson. Hello, how are you doing? Thank you for coming. Welcome, you. welcome, welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Thank welcome. you, welcome. sir. We're yeah. going to get into your book in just a few minutes. I'm going to introduce the rest of my panel. To his right is Dr. Thrasher. He's a doctor of biophysiology. Is that correct? Wrong. Psychology. <laughs> okay. Psychology. Okay. I have a doctor of divinity degree. Awesome. Awesome. Mm. He's a man that marched with Dr. King during the movement in the 60s, and I want him to tell us a little bit about some of the actual events and experiences he had there. Um, to his right, we have Vincent Cheeks. Hello, he's hello. Our, he's our master research analyst. He's also a professional <coughs> actor and a retired teacher, or actually a former teacher, former I should teacher, say. Former teacher, yeah. And Didn't we're going to ask him <laughs> a few questions later about uh, if any, he has any announcements. He usually has announcements for the show. <coughs> and anchoring me to my uh, direct, uh, across from me is a community organizer, activist, a leader of the Black Panthers, and a black nationalist, Yanga Nkrumah. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for such a warm and wonderful welcome. See, and it, it is a pleasure to be sitting opposite of you, and I know it's going to be a dynamic show. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you all for coming and joining us for this awesome experience. Talk about Dr. Rodney Sampson. Well, one quick announcement. King and Amish. Okay, Vince, to go ahead with your <coughs> announcement. I just want to remind everybody that we did change the name to the Arena Uncensored. So follow us on Twitter at the Arena Uncensored. Follow us uh, on YouTube at the Arena Uncensored. Uh, you can also call into the show today. Please do. The telephone number is 
770-559-2999. That is the only announcement. I am anxious to get started on this discussion. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for the announcement. Okay, um, Rodney, tell me, tell, tell us a little bit about these 12 currencies for transforming your business and your life. Sure. Once again, thank you for um, having me. A um, little background, I'm a native Atlanta. I uh, grew up in Southwest Atlanta, Collier Heights Elementary, mm, okay. High School. Mm. Swat, swat. Uh, first was introduced to uh, I Have a Dream, actually Normalcy No More. Uh, our two historians will know that the speech on the march on Washington with Jobs and Freedom was called Normalcy No More. Mm. <coughs> we remember I Have a Dream when Aretha said, Martin, tell them about the dream, and that becomes the, <laughs> you know, the just like in, in, right. in church, mm -hmm. we remember the cadence and not the message. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. Um, so I remember learning that um, at eight years old and going around to different churches and um, just, you know, saying that, that speech. I remember every uh, paragraph in its in entirety. Um, I've been an entrepreneur for 15 years. I've, I've had four companies, two tech, and two have been acquired, uh, two exits, and um, uh, very involved in the, the startup culture. And in 2010, I just finished um, uh, work with uh, Namibia in the um, southern region of Africa, yeah. a program I was in with Dr. John Maxwell. And I was coming back, and I was really, if you study uh, Napoleon Hill, mm -hmm. Napoleon Hill uh, talks about As infinity man, thinking. purpose, mm. exactly. Uh, the work I uh, knew it to most is uh, a, a work that wasn't released while he was living. It was released almost 100 years later called Outwitting uh, the Devil, okay. mm. where he's one. having this conversation with, uh, quote unquote, the devil, mm. but it's really himself. Right. And he asks the enemy, he says, well, why do 98% of humanity drift through life, you know, they have great jobs, or they have okay jobs, they right. have relationships, they do what they do, ups and downs, but they ultimately drift and never discover their purpose in life. And so the enemy responds and says, well, it's because people trust the systems and the institutions more than they trust the divine. Wow, that's deep. And the systems are trusted. <laughs> Politics is trusted, religion is mm. trusted, education, you know, our system, these are highly trusted right. systems. Right. You know, we're told, even today, uh, as people of color, if you can just get to college, and yeah. they, then you'll get a job, and those jobs don't exist anymore. But right. we're still kind of running in that, that, that mm -hmm. role, right? So I was looking for purpose in my own life and um, started working on the book, had been signed by a publisher. Um, originally, Bernice King and I were going to write the book. Mm. And um, I don't have to go there, but that didn't work out. <laughs> right. right. And so I decided to go ahead and, and work the book and started doing my research. And so Chaos of Community became my Bible, right? Mm. I, I, I dug into Chaos of Community and I kind of um, saw from my perspective a lot of King's economic ideals. And I said, well, what if we can create a conversation where we turn capitalism, Dr. Thrasher, on its head, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whereby you know, everybody's like, I just want the money, show me the money. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we turned capitalism on his head and said, well, if you become the currency, or you become the money, mm -hmm. because true currency is intangible. So right, right. To answer the original question is we redefined currency. Mm -hmm. When most folks think that currency is just the dollars or the promissory right. notes, and as long as we agree that the dollar or the yen or the the euro mm -hmm. or the pound is it. Like mm -hmm. now we, a lot of us are starting to agree that Bitcoin <coughs> is the currency, yeah. right? Yeah. So as long as we mentally agree that, and so real, real currency is intangible. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of entrepreneurs that started you know, coming to our events and coming to our incubator. And so what we did was say, let's look at the intangible currency. So currency is anything that flows, mm -hmm. right? Electricity is a currency. currency. Right. Right. Air, oxygen flows through our body, it's a currency. Mm -hmm. All currencies flow. And if it doesn't flow, for instance, if you don't think oxygen is a currency, just hold your breath for a few <laughs> minutes and you'll see how uh, uh, wealthy a currency it is. So we started by defining kind of this roadmap like service. Your service is a community. 
connectivity, the relationships mm -hmm. that you you build. I'm sure some of the relationships you've had over the, you know, your lifespan, the ones that you formed 50 plus years ago, you know, very influential people. You pick up the phone and you say, hey, I know you win. Hey, how's it going? Mm -hmm. You know, you have the basis of that relationship. Right. Reciprocity, positivity, personal responsibility, self-image, that's a big one. Um, diversity, character and dignity, dreaming, of course, openness and transparency, mm -hmm. creativity and innovation, that's a big one for us, and then and courage. Yeah. And if you talk to successful or rather significant people, people who have discovered parts of their purpose or know why they were created, and then they took an assessment, and we're actually looking to turn like this into an assessment where you'll know where you're strong mm, right. and where you're actually oh, that'd be excellent. weak. Mm. But if you embrace these principles or these currencies uh, now and start applying them to your life, whatever you want to do, it, it becomes sort of kind of a foundational construct. So that's that's the that's the, the basic mm. premise mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. you know, how I got to this point and why we decided to. Uh, and the book is, you know, was released as a business book. I didn't want it to be self-help. Mm -hmm. I didn't want it to be mm -hmm. sociology. You know, I told my publisher I'll do the book, but it's got to be an economic book. <laughs> right. And um, that's that's how King Anonymous was born. Excuse me. Let me just interject there because it's funny that you say when you wrote it, you meant it to be a business book. As I was telling you <laughs> when we were talking outside, the first nine chapters of the book, I thought it was a spiritual book. Mm -hmm until I got to the sentence in chapter nine that says, though this is not meant to be a spiritual <laughs> book. <laughs> right, really, I was right. like, well, what have I been reading? But then I realized what you did was take spiritual principles and apply it to a business economic model. Sure. And then once I made that connection, if you mm -hmm. will, um, I was really able to see the, the broader picture and the whole global scope that you and Dr. King were talking about. So I personally have to say I am very honored and glad that you wrote the book because it really connected with me. Well, I have my days because, you know, uh, I, don't, I, know who, I don't know who to attribute this principle to, but you know, once you are introduced to information or intelligence mm -hmm. or knowledge or revelation, you become accountable mm -hmm. for that knowledge. Right. You know, you can't live your life the same once you are introduced to a truth or that truth right. or whatever your truth right. is. So. I have my days because now I have to personally live right. up to <laughs> right. a standard um, yes. beyond. And some days you just are not up, you know, to the mm. people who listen. Some days you're just not up to that. <laughs> it's a lot. It's We're a, human, it's a struggle, right? right. Yeah. It is a, it's a big struggle. struggle. Yeah. I, my question is, when coming from Kingonomics, when did it dawn on you that one of King's mission? was a mission of economics, and it's a twofold question, doctor. And from that, when it dawned on you that King's mission, one of his missions, was an economic mission, how far do you think he got, or um, what hindered it, or what stopped it, and why isn't that the theme of the King message today? Well, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, if you listen and read his speeches and his messages and his talks, I mean, when he talks about aggregating um, buying power, mm -hmm. like that's a macroeconomics construct, right? When, mm -hmm. he, when he talks about, I mean, when you look at the Montgomery bus park, right. bus bus car. Mm -hmm. Now, most folks would give, that a, give him an A. I gave him a B minus, I'll tell you Ooh. why. <laughs> oh, I got to hear that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm like, I got to think hear about that. that. Well, <laughs> so, for instance, to do a, a basically it was a it was a it was a fast right yeah. they 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 it was a fast on riding the public transportation mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. as an alternative to that they actually many of them started their own yes. small businesses mm -hmm. to support those who still needed transportation mm -hmm. so when they sat down to negotiate they negotiated being able to sit anywhere on the bus right which got them to be minus. Yeah. <laughs> they would have got the A if they would had negotiated some supplier contracts. Right, to get some buses. Like today, like mm -hmm. Marta mm -hmm. today has right. a supply diversity. We got to that in the 70s and the mm -hmm. 80s, primarily through Maynard Jackson's innovation in what we call supply chain diversity and mm -hmm. government contracting. When he said, we will not build an Atlanta airport 
if 30 plus, I believe 35 percent of the contracts did not right. go to um, underrepresented minorities, right. which mm -hmm. would have been black right. women, et cetera. Mm -hmm. right. So we got to be minors for getting the seat in the front. Mm -hmm. But if King probably could have truly put his economic hat on or brought the members of his team in, um, I had this conversation with Dexter a few years ago, a couple years ago when the book was coming out, and he said, you know, he had a letter where um, Coretta King and Dr. King were dialoguing, and originally they were talking about making economics the primary focus of the movement. Right, right. But that didn't work because one, the people who were supporting it weren't ready for it, and two, you can't have economic parity unless you have what we talk about in the book, right, human, human parity. Right, exactly. You know, if, we're, if this is a negotiating table mm -hmm. and it's a $100,000 job or $500,000 contract on the table, if in your heart of hearts, I'm not talking about what the legislation says, mm -hmm. enforced or not, I'm talking about in your heart, if you don't see me as a 100% human being, mm -hmm or 100% American <clears throat> citizen or whatever country you're a citizen of, right. that 100,000 is already three-fifths of 100,000. Right, right. It's already three-fifths of a half a million. Mm -hmm. And we see that, you know, throughout mm -hmm. society right. today. Um, Lily Ledbetter Act, right? The president mm -hmm. passed the act where women would get fair wages, mm -hmm. right? Um, then there's the enforcement of that. But I think that, um, he would have moved forward faster with the economics if the people who were supporting funding and financing, when you read Chaos Our Community, mm -hmm. where do we go from here? The same people who supported integration, or well, let's back up, the same people who supported the Civil Rights Act didn't automatically support the Voting Rights Act. Mm -hmm. Let's go back before because there's the 19, I believe the 54 Interstate Commerce Act, mm -hmm. which desegregated federal highways. Right. So I could go to the gas station or the hotel on a federal highway, right. but couldn't go on the state, state highway. That was highway. Right. Johnson. There you go. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you just look at kind of how policy, you know, come, mm -hmm. comes to light, the same folks who were okay with us going to spend our money weren't okay with us making money. Exactly. Right. And they said, slow down. You're you asking know, for too much. Act too moving much. too fast. Moving too fast. Yeah. So when economics came at, at the table, mm -hmm. and it was interesting how it kind of escalated. So King left in, in uh, 68. When Nixon got in, they created, uh, was it E E E E O C E E O C E E O C um, the whole, this whole economic mm -hmm. engine. And then they had the old, uh, the Opportunity Funding Corporation, which mm. was created in the 70s, Donald Rumsfeld actually was tasked with bringing the OFC mm. to life. Mm -hmm. Kathy Hughes, Bob, a lot of these pioneering African Americans received millions of dollars in non-recourse grants to start small businesses. Wow. The OFC doesn't really exist today. It was acquired by the Third Group Marshall you know, you know, College mm. Fund. But back to your original point was people were okay with the fundamental, uh, you know, rights. Mm -hmm. You know, even abolitionists, you know, our evangelical buddies right. <laughs> quick to talk about how, uh, you know, abolition, you know, and what happened uh, with the Quakers. Mm -hmm. But they agreed with the basic fundamental rights of a human to be free, mm -hmm. but they did not believe in equality of the cultures. Inclusion mm -hmm. and equality. Right. But exactly. here's what I'm hearing. And Going back a little further. Matt, speak up a little bit. Uh, I'm trying not to lose control. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're a good person. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Fashion. Let me say this. Um, if you look at the Montgomery and you look at Alabama when the movement actually started, we then, I said we because I was part of that uh, regime then but I really didn't get involved until 63. But when it originally started, it started simply a thing about voting. It was not about uh, investing. Right. Because you were dealing with people from farms, 
-hmm. You were dealing with people who was working minimum wage, and at that time, probably 75 cents an hour. Uh, that idea of uh, investing was not even discussed. Mm -hmm. But then when King discovered how to break the camel's back, as a lot of people forgot, this man led a demonstration against Richard's department store. Mm -hmm. And what he said was, if we're ever gonna get riches or anybody else to understand that black people, color people at that time, mm -hmm. need jobs, they need to be able to be included and not excluded, what he said was, we will hurt him where it hurts most, in, in his pocket. pocket. Right. Right. You hear the and right. that's what he did was with Richard. Mm -hmm. And then he tried the same program in Alabama with the buses. See, so isn't that an economic, though, it, wouldn't, wouldn't that be an uh, uh, economic program? It was an economic program, but it had nothing to do with us becoming investors. It's just simply saying that we wanted an opportunity to be a part of the, uh, of, of the system. That was mm. it. Right. Mm. It's unfortunate. We, we, we didn't think that far ahead. We, we, it's not that we were not allowed. We were not, a lot of blacks, uh, say doctors and lawyers and those guys, felt that King should have not gone as far as he did because they were satisfied like it was. They said, leave it like With it them. is. Even his father said that. Right. Leave it alone. We're satisfied. We as colored people don't want to uh, do that. Let's just leave it alone. You know what I find interesting, and his was interesting, that someone who was there, the perception that you have, and then someone who has done the research, the perception, because I'm almost hearing two different, mm -hmm. two different things yeah. here. What do you take from? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're both economic. Mm -hmm. Paradigms. I mean, consumerism is the greatest anesthetizer. That's it. Okay. okay. They were fighting for the right to spend money mm -hmm. at the counter, enriches, then get jobs. Right. Now he's talking about investment. I mean, you know, we got to go back a ways to look at Tulsa, Black Wall Street, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Before that great mm -hmm. diaspora. Mm -hmm. Right. There were people from Tulsa that went to Atlanta, mm -hmm. Auburn, Harlem. Mm -hmm. Uh, different places, Chicago. Right. So there was a remnant of people who understood ownership. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's it's tough for the owned to see themselves as owners. Mm -hmm. You know, progress is 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 slow. And right. no matter how fast, I mean, you know, I don't care how much tweeting you do, posting you do, mm -hmm. you can attest to this. It's a slow, slow and steady process, wins right. the race, but the narrative does you know, I think the narrative was there. It was probably just over, uh, overpowered mm. by the simplicity of let us get the right to exist and mm. to vote and to integrate. That was it. But yeah. you see, here's another thing. You take like, and I'm not knocking any of them. Talk to us. Marsh Brown, Mohouse, Clark, um, they was not teaching um, self-existence. What do you mean? Meaning they was not trained or taught to start your own business. Right. right. Look at how we can do it. Mm -hmm. right. They were simply taught to get a job. Get right. a, just simply right. get a job. Great so when King mm -hmm. come out of Morehouse, he came out with the same idea, saying let's just get a job. Dr. Mays, he was saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Just get them so they could be on a job and eventually one day they'll move up. But <laughs> So is this why, I'm sorry for getting, so ahead, do you ahead, think that this is one of the reasons that King failed to uh, really grasp the bigger picture we were talking about, the Montgomery bus boycott. And you were talking about when he sat at the table to negotiate instead of really sitting at the table saying, okay, you know, because we had entrepreneurship really come out of that. Small businesses come out of that, yeah. people provide. So due to this type of thinking back then, what you were saying they owned, not really being able to grasp ownership, do you think this is why it didn't, he really couldn't grasp the bigger picture and his Kingonomics an evolution of the whole Process. Well, what you say? Go that. ahead. Yeah. He okay. did not see the opportunity there to invest. What they were doing was what we call in New York City. Mm -hmm. What do you kind of cab? Uh, what do you call? What Gypsy. You, gypsy. Gypsy. That's what they were. Mm -hmm. But they didn't see where they could just branch away from the gypsy and start their own system. Mm -hmm. They couldn't. They didn't. Why see not? Because I mean, you're looking I'm at not a time. Talk, I'm just coming off of a farm. Right. But I mean, you're looking at a time when you're looking at segregation. You're looking at a time of the mom and pop stores. You're looking at a time, I think, um, the doctor alludes to in his book. I think King should have watched his father a little closer. Hmm. Talk to us about that. I mean, Daddy King, who financed 
a lot of the movement and guys like H.J. Russell, you know, they were there. Mm -hmm. H.J. Russell was a multi-million dollar, was a multi-millionaire. Oh, he died, yeah. You know, in in the movement, mm -hmm. they were the ones writing the bill checks, right, going in. You know, right. today we got the, the the Soros of the world that are writing big checks in Ferguson. Mm -hmm. Back then, it was the right. it, it was the H.J.'s of the world, right. right? Mm -hmm. And so I think they were there. It's, it always, you know, it's 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 you manifest your purpose once you decide on it. I mean, first of all, for a man to dedicate his life, right. know, he could have easily been the dean of divinity at Howard. Oh yeah, right. He could have settled back. Pastor the church, he probably you know large church back in those days, right. and it'd be no telling where we would be today mm -hmm. in terms right. of progress. So oh, to yeah. de to de to decide I will be that martyr mm -hmm. is foremost. Most people right. don't want to die, die for, them, for anything. themselves, right. let alone right. the family. <laughs> right. So, right. Right. First of all, you cannot take that away from the man, mm -hmm. right. but you you manifest your purpose based upon your level of exposure. Mm -hmm. So if you let's say folks say well. Man, you got to do better. If you don't know what better is, mm. you try to manifest better, like you <laughs> right. say, based upon what you saw on the farm. Right, right, right. Now, a lot of those black farmers were business owners. Okay. And they probably, some of them were business owners. Mm -hmm. They probably put, you know, you had a lot of preachers at the table. So then you got the intra egos going on, mm -hmm. right? Uh, hey, you know, I appreciate your tithe and offering and your dues, but we got this here. Okay. Okay, right. and so when that when you get in that inner room, you know they probably listened to H.J. Russell because he was bailing them out, mm -hmm. but they probably didn't listen to too many of the people, mm -hmm. and I think they were timing it as well. You know, mm -hmm. as King moved into the poor people's campaign, a part of that was looking cross racial barriers and saying the same sheriff that's locking me up has the same condition. We all been duped by the same thing. We think this is a racist issue. It's mm -hmm. really a classist issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think when he really probably discovered that and was like, okay, the next cause is economics, we never fought, truly saw the manifestation of that, that, that poor people's you know, camp campaign. campaign come to fruition. I don't think, I don't think that, um, let me phrase it another way. What I, from what I, my experience in the entire movement itself was that we didn't have the, investing mind, the venture out economics at that time. We had only getting into the poli political ring mm -hmm. because I used to work directly with Maynard Jackson. Mm -hmm. And uh, Maynard has his agenda, even when he ran against Herman Talmadge, we had the idea that he wanted to beat Talmadge. Okay. But Maynard needed somebody he could use to get his name out there, mm -hmm. and he used Talmadge. Once he got out there, we discovered that he was a brilliant man mm -hmm. in his own right. Russell, you had, you also had another one which was not even talked about, Pascal James, right. who was yeah. quietly investing, mm -hmm. you know. So, and then we had these meetings over, and then if you really wanted to learn who was who and what was what, when you go to Pascal Brothers, Everybody who was anybody, everybody was that's Pascal. where we were. Yeah. I see the pictures up there. When <laughs> you see all the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. That's where we were. So, and if you wanted to become mayor, mm -hmm. you had to go through us. Right. We take you up on the field so, flow. Political, your, your, your political involvement and, and for, you know, uh, empowering us politically. And in time, you know, I, no, no, go no, go right ahead. Um, empowering us politically. To what end game was that? I mean, if it, if it wasn't economics, if it wasn't to what Ingham was it was that complete for a total complete when we say integration, let's let's go back to that. When we say integration, what are we talking about? Well, here? Well you gotta understand how America works. Okay. I mean, the precedence of anything most of America does begin with policy. It sets the tone. Okay. Right. So you yeah. you know, there's economic policy. I mean, I've been actively involved in new policies over the last three to five years, like the Jobs Act, which was uh, you have the American Jobs Act, which didn't pass, but then you have the Jobs Act which passed on April 5th, mm -hmm. 2012. Um, president signed it, which is uh, crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. So this new equity crowdfunding bill that was passed and now it's coming to law through the SEC, which allows us to pool our money legally and invest in one another. It kind of came under the radar screen, but the president passed that. So mm -hmm. um, there are local laws. That, so when you start looking at Dodd-Frank and some of the other economic policies, that have been passed that parallel, you know, with with the civil rights 
policies or educational policies, this country is built on policy. Right, right. Now, right. the enforcement of that policy is always it's a totally different. Issue. Right, right. But it, it, it starts there. You right. know, I mean, for me to have a, star, a small business that comes into our Opportunity Hub, which is our incubator, which, matter of fact, one of our campuses today is on the, the Pascal's property okay. on Northside Drive. It's the last joint venture that Mr. Russell did mm -hmm, before he mm -hmm, passed. Mm -hmm. He wanted to do something around entrepreneurship, and we put an entrepreneur incubator on, on, on the campus. Okay. But if a company comes in and we like the company and we want to make a small investment or introduce them to investors, or, there is federal and state law that governs that. Okay. And if you deviate from that, then you can get in some big issues. Mm -hmm. So policy becomes that defining precedent. So I think when they were on to that, he probably couldn't get, I mean, look, he got the civil rights through, right. okay, or step one. Mm -hmm. Then he got voting rights. Mm -hmm. You know, that's fundamental right, right there. Right. You know, that's just fundamental for our dignity. Right. I would have to think that in association with the Poor People's Campaign, mm -hmm. if he would have lived to actually pull that march off at the scale, mm -hmm. there would have been economic policy to follow that. But yeah. what, when you look at the meetings they used to have on Auburn, I used to sit in and listen, because I'm 26 years old, a young kid who's just learning and didn't have a clue about civil rights or nothing else. The only thing I knew was being on the corner and hustle. That's all I, you know, that was mm -hmm. it. But when you, when ideas was brought to King, King folk was on Vietnam. Mm. That was his focus. Mm -hmm. Right. And he was angry because uh, so many black men were going to Vietnam and coming out. Mm -hmm. And the word was on Auburn, you go in a nigga and you come out a nigga. Okay. They got tired of that. Right. They was not getting any grant money. Mm -hmm. CNS Bank, which is no longer exists, could, you couldn't even get a, you could if you went for a small business loan or a loan, mm -hmm. you know they wouldn't give it to you. So what they start doing is that we're going to march on, on CNS Bank mm -hmm. to make them understand. So what they said was, okay, we'll put so much money aside for you to invest. Mm -hmm. But then when you went to the small business, uh, the small bid business league itself and said, well, we want to get this, they put you through all this red paper tape and paperwork. You said, well, forget it. So a lot of guys, you know, we we was we was hurt. Yeah, I just Go want ahead. to interject here. This is a live talk show, so please call in 770-559-2999. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please give us a call, 770-559-2999. Um, go ahead and finish your thought, Dr. So, when, you know, we sit at Pascal's a lot of times, even with Russell, mm -hmm. and we think of how Maynard took Russell by the arm, really did, and say, I want you to work, I want you to do the airport runway. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people was complaining, saying, no, man. He was saying, Pascal, I want you to have, I want you to put food on every plane. Maynard did that. Mm -hmm. But we still didn't get on the idea of saying, going to this man and say, we want to start our own thing. We wouldn't do it. Right. Fancy, yeah, yeah. We're uh, just getting there today. I mean, we've always had some great economic <laughs> yeah. people. So, but I think this is the definitive cause of our age. If you did a pool now, half of me, let's look at the HBCUs, mm -hmm. those who are fortunate to go there real quick. I went to HBCU. There you go. FAMU. Um, my wife is a Howard alum. Um, there are probably about 450,000 to maybe 500,000 students actively enrolled today. Uh, when I go speak at HBCUs or colleges in general, mm -hmm. um, and I ask, how many people want to graduate and get a job, and how many people want to start a business? Mm -hmm. The majority of the room raises their hand business. that they want to start a business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most fall into jobs because there's no curriculum at the school Come to on. really That's it. That's it. talk about. I mean, then we're going back way to this great debate between Booker, w, T, Booker and, T and, 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 WB, and, yeah. and, and, and W.B. Du Bois, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, right. We're still dealing with, you know, we deal with racism, we deal with classism, but in, internally we deal with something called arrivism. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's deep. That's no, 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 you can do. That's heavy. Uh, moment. Right, right. That yeah. I mean, the, and we're seeing it here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're seeing yeah. it here. There, there's, there's, yeah. There, there is a pride when you get accepted into a college and you're, you feel like your lifestyle can change, mm, your yeah. dorm room is yeah. better than what you grew mm -hmm, up. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you think, oh, wow, and you get used to that, you got yeah. that freedom, you can go do what you want. Yeah. Uh, be with who you want. I mean, so you think that 
that's it. Yeah. But we're not seeing the global world view of why these opportunities exist. And so when you start looking at the issue today is we need to be thinking about definitive strategies on how we're going to take these students mm -hmm. and prepare them to be business owners yeah. and investors. If, if I had to look at the galaxy and so say you got the sun right here, and if civil rights was earth mm -hmm. and voting rights was Mars, mm -hmm. Pluto is investment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. in the Milky right. Way. Yeah. Probably right. another star so yeah. right. far. Right. We have so far to go. Yeah. Right. But we don't have that much time to do to, it. To, to achieve that. Right. And so it's fortunate. Like, I have a question for you, Dr. Sampson. Sure. Now, why do you think that Dr. King's message of equality is always pushed, but nothing is ever mentioned of his economic plan? Because I've, I'm 40 years old, and I've never heard of this until I read this book. I went to an HBCU, like you were just talking about, film you and how, and I, they never mentioned anything about Dr. King's economic plan. They they push basically the same stuff about the equality and all that. So why do you think that? There are two perspectives. In our community, we still are afraid to talk about money amongst ourselves. Yeah. That's why we still have some very prominent people who die, even Dr. King, from mm -hmm. what I've researched, who died without even a simple burial policy or mm -hmm. life insurance policy. Wow. You know, for a, a burial policy in Willie Watkins and I had this conversation before. It's like, you know, a ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollar policy costs you ten, fifteen bucks. It's it's like, for you not to have that today, right. mm -hmm. it's almost like That's I think in the scripture it says, um, um, if you don't leave an inheritance to your children's children, you're worse than an infidel. It didn't call you infidel. Oh, okay. You're worse, worse than an infidel. Right. It didn't even right. name wow. it. Right. Mm -hmm. You're worse, folks. Right. That's mm -hmm. to, <laughs> to, for your children mm -hmm. and children's children to have to pass the plate to bury your decaying mm -hmm. carcass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the, the spirit is gone, the soul right, is gone, right? right. right. To, 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 it is so deplorable. Right. And it's, you, we, at the same time, that was created because when that mostly white man would come to my great grandmother's mm -hmm. house with the insurance policy and collect that twenty dollars every week mm -hmm. and come to find out it was only a five hundred dollar right. policy. We don't trust economic systems. I mean, heck, slavery was a chattel slavery right. was an economic, economic system. Right. Right. Before there was a Wall Street, there was a trading block. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we were the currency. Right. Mm -hmm. That and right. we were the currency that was insured. Mm -hmm. Right. We were the currency that was traded upon, invested upon. I mean. Look at the three, if you go back to the, the, the recession, the most recent recession, what were the three industries that our president, a black man, mm -hmm. had to bail out? Banking, banking, banking auto, automotive, automotive, okay. and, uh, home, real estate, uh, real estate, real estate mm -hmm. yeah. insurance, insurance, and banking, yeah. and auto. Okay. If you take at least three of them, all of them made disproportionate amounts of wealth off of the slave trade. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Banks owned slaves, insurance yeah. companies insurance insured them. Right. Right. Metropolitan real estate. Right. I can name one now. You Metropolitan. See? Hate so, farm. Let's not mm -hmm. use names. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say hate, <laughs> let's say hate <laughs> farm. All hate. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we got two paradigms we got to address. One, we gotta have an authentic conversation about money. Mm -hmm. Right. Matter of fact, we're launching an initiative next month called um, Wealth Month. Please tell the people about King it. King of Wealth Welcome. I was surprised we went on and bought the domain name. You usually can tell if you're pretty unique with something when you go on to GoDaddy and try to buy the, buy the website name, mm -hmm. right? Went on and wealthmonth.com.org.net was all available. Mm -hmm. And we grabbed it immediately. And I said, there's no, conver there's no global conversation about the creation of wealth. I mean, right. in America, look at our racial wealth gap. The yeah. average net worth, and I talk about the income, I'm not bragging on the trillion dollars that we spend. Right. After taxes. <laughs> right on. Right. Okay. Right on. After taxes. Stop taxes. Bragging on right. That. <laughs> the average net worth of a white American family is $110,000. Yeah. Asian American family, primarily because of their interest in technology, and again, the policies that are bringing a lot of immigrant families mm -hmm. from India and Asia to America, EB-5, uh, 
fast forwarding these visas because they're coming over here working in these tech companies. Mm -hmm. Seventy-six thousand dollars for Asian Americans. Latino America is seventy-six hundred. Mm -hmm. Net worth. I'm not talking about your right. salary. Right. I'm talking about right. your assets worth, minus yeah. liability. Right. African American family is less than five thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. It's less today than it was during the ten-year um, reconstruction period right. after emancipation right. of the Southern slaves. Right. Right. Considering inflation. Yep. The average net worth of a a a a black female that has a child, a single black female, is five dollars mm. wow. net worth. So we're we're launching an initiative. I'm on the board of a company called Digit that allows and helps people save automatically, intelligently, without thinking about it. It mm. saves for you. So if you go buy coffee every day and mm -hmm. you, one day you don't buy coffee, Digit goes in and pulls it out and saves it for you. They, we did a beta test with 500 users, and in 90 days, those 500 people save over $600,000. Wow. You can't invest until you have money to exactly. invest. Right. You can't start a business until That's you right. can provide for yourself and your family. And we get a lot of people who come into our incubator that you know, help me raise capital. My first thing is, why should an investor invest in you when you haven't invested in yourself? In yourself. Right. Yeah. You're not willing to get educated. Mm -hmm. you, you think you, you go into the bank, the bank is telling you no, you shouldn't be going to the bank because the bank's not going to loan you money with no revenue in your company because you can't even service the debt. Mm -hmm. That's it. So we have to start looking at what are we teaching our youth, our high school students, our college Come students, right. the workforce. Mm -hmm. right. We have to start teaching them how to see themselves as investors Come first. Come on now, you're talking. Okay. Right, right. I like one of the things you said when we go back to, and you talk about the uh, arrivalism. Yeah. <laughs> arrivalism. 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 Which is deep. I mean, because yeah. what, we're, what we're looking at, you know, like when I hear Dr. Thrasher, I'm hearing it from the perspective of his time when it was um, like uh, Dr. Uh, Samson is saying, it was about the human dignity. It was about, right. and this is what we're getting Equality. from, you know, Dr. Thrasher, and then we're getting it from a perspective of, okay, we're in this generation where, and we thank you for your contributions, man. If had it not Absolutely. been for brothers and, and, and sisters like you who got thank on sir. that front line, we thank wouldn't you, even sir. be able to be here having this right. discussion. Right. So we definitely thank you for that contribution. But now that we're here, we're looking at where do we go from this point? That's that that naturally, right yeah. right. uh, you know, as evolution, it has to be, and I think that was a beautiful analogy, talking, putting it in the solar system, that it has to be an yeah. economic one. That it has to be economics at this point, and we rehash it. I hope, though, it's not a case that we have to do the Moses thing and wander in the wilderness and let your yeah. old heads die off. <laughs> but, but, but we're doing that now. We're doing that now. Yeah, okay. We are. We, we are, are doing it now. We are going in a circle, yeah. and that circle is going to last for about 40 years mm. until the old generation die out. Mm. That was the purpose of the, of the circle. Right. But now, when will colleges, and I, I won't mention names, <laughs> Sit a student down and say, look, what, what, do, what do you want to go from here? Mm -hmm. I got into a school called Stratford. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting what this man said to me. He said, we don't want your money. I said, what do you mean you don't want my money? He said, we don't want your money. He said, what is your plan? I said, well, I'll be working. He said, no, we don't want your money. Mm -hmm. He said, we teach you how to do your bit, go into a bit for yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. He said, if you don't have that plan, Mr. Dr. Thrasher, he said, you don't need to forget it. He said, the day of working for somebody, mm -hmm. it's just about over. Mm -hmm. And he said, you need to start planning for yourself. And when we had our meeting downtown in Cab County, this guy was, he was, he was awesome. Mm -hmm. And when he said, that was a time we as whites worked hard to make sure that you people didn't even get us to a, a, a level of, of a return. Mm -hmm. He said, but now, you have the ability to do, but you come in telling me about it. You want a job? Mm -hmm. He said, no. Do you think that those days are over? And, and if not, is it because we're, we're as, as far as African people here, want to be more diverse and want to be more multicultural? And, you know, my question to that, because, you know, I'm a nationalist, is that going to be beneficial? I know we were reading in the book and we are talking about diversity. Now, I understand diversity as far as ideas, as far as on them you know, trade and exchange and things like that. But when you when it comes to building a economic base, 
Is that one of the best solutions for us? Is that an option we should look at in this day and time? Yes. yes. I've, 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 you know, I always say balance yeah. is the key to all things. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, I've, me being, I could tell you now, as far as, and I, and I agree with Dr. Thrasher, it's not even the old transitioning. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm part of the X generation, right? Yeah, right. My generation suffers from arrivism. Mm. You know, we compete about how large our house is, Absolutely. our right. car, you know, if mm. we're in the same fraternity, do you have a boxless position versus a mm -hmm, vice boxless mm -hmm, position? Mm -hmm. Are you in the boule? You in, okay, right. You, right. You're right. on a you mega, but I'm in the boule. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. and, and, or, you know, you, you are archbishop and I'm just a suffragan bishop. Right. You are overseer and you are this. And then you go in the mainstream world, the very folks we look up to and esteem, they haven't even heard of them. Okay. Right. We don't even have a global world view mm -hmm. right. or, or just consciousness or what right. have you. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, that's why I think I'm seeing companies young, it's these millennials that I think we, we've got to focus on. Right. I'm seeing these millennials come in and they've got diversity. So let's say uh, we, in, in, at Opportunity Hub, we talk about the co-founding of teams, right? Mm -hmm. Who are the, the main, we, 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 we believe the best companies are not just one person. Right. You know, you know, 100 percent of nothing is nothing. Five percent of Microsoft is less than five percent of Microsoft is what Bill Gates owns. Mm -hmm. right. So obviously he had partners and right. right. co-founders along the way. And I'm seeing these diverse teams. I'm seeing just candidly, I see there's an African American male on a the team, there's an Asian American who might be the coder. Mm -hmm. The black kids got a tech idea, but the coder is the one that can build it. Right. Now, if you got four guys on a team, they all just got ideas, mm. and nobody can't build it, three years from now, <laughs> you'll be in the same place. But I'm seeing these diverse and inclusive teams come together on one side. Now, on my work on the continent, I would tell you that Africa is light years ahead in terms of them embracing uh, what other cultures have understood. Right. And it cannot be, like, for instance, if we say let's look at um, the modern iteration of, 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 of Jewish community in America. I'm not talking about original Hebrews. I'm talking about, right. Okay, and it, it's okay to emulate some of their best practices. Absolutely. For instance, the, the flowing of currency, the dollar mm -hmm. in our community, community, you know, mm -hmm. before it leaves. Yes. You know, like, we don't have to reinvent some of the wheel. We mm -hmm. just got to get a clue and, mm -hmm. and do some of but those does, things. Yeah. But does diversity... Provide, and that's my question, like you were okay. saying, if you have the uh, inventor or you have the person that comes up with the idea and you have this person that's a decoder and this person that's that, why don't our schools produce, and we were talking about entrepreneurship, produce people that could fill these slots? You find one of the reasons that the dollar stays in that community is because they're the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they, everything that they need is right there with inside well, we, the community. We're starting to do it. One thing we do have to realize, until we see ourselves, you know, let's say 40 million plus African Americans. Mm -hmm. Until we use some of these innovative laws like crowdfunding and some of the other policies out there and our young black males or seasoned black males who, or and females who become investment bankers, they're exposed to these high, um, um, uh, what's what I want to use, they, these, these very um, financial instruments that mm -hmm. produce wealth, right? right. The, do they bring it back to the community? No. Right. Okay? So, right now, I could tell you, okay. so if you got a hot idea right for business, you, you really got to go outside of the community. Okay. Okay, why he was saying that, mm -hmm. you know, right now, if you're going to make it, I'm telling these young entrepreneurs, it's geographical and it's also uh, culturally. Mm -hmm. You know, if you talk to 100 black folks and they want to invest in your small business, you a fool not to talk to some white folks <laughs> right on. or yeah. some right, Jewish right. folks That's or some real. Latino folks. Yeah. And if you can't get it in Atlanta, you know, you get to Silicon Valley, get mm -hmm. to Austin, get to New York. Mm -hmm. um, 
yes, should we be able to have it within? Yeah, do we need black coders and hackers and mm -hmm. tech folks? You know, there's a big push to put black people in STEM, right? Yeah. But right now, if we push our people to STEM, they're gonna be working for mainstream companies. Right. That's what's out that's there. What, right. So but I you, think we gotta we gotta see the long term picture. Go ahead. Yeah. I want to ask you a question. hundred year nationalist, you know, not yeah. ten year. Ten year. I like, I like that. Hundred year nationalist. I love it. Yeah. I that's my ask, hashtag. Yeah. Hundred year nationalist. <laughs> I want to answer your question about is diversity a good idea from my personal perspective and point of view on life. I've always been open to, <laughs> I've always been diver open to diverse groups, always. Mm -hmm. Even when my mother told me, if you can't use your comb, don't bring them home, I brought mm -hmm. them home anyway. Um, but for me, my personal philosophy has always been, of course you want to start with your home base mm -hmm. and your people and you want to encourage them and promote them to do well. But my thing has always been do that, like with the school I want to build, mm -hmm. do that with the kids at a young age, but also teach them, like you were saying, that if you really want to be global yeah. and, and worldwide, you really got to reach out and connect and learn how these other people operate, learn how they think I, and learn what they yeah. like. I agree with it wholeheartedly. I mean, you see it through, it's like we use the example of the Jewish community here in the Americas. Uh, and they did it. We had a relationship with them. You know, it was diverse. They, they worked in this. But never, and I love that 100-year nationalist, we're never forgetting the long-term objective. And that is not to be, and I think that that is one of the messages when we go back to the book, that one of the messages that has been taken from Dr. King, which is about empowering a people and bringing stability to a people and a people to be empowered to themselves and to have self-dignity and self-pride, that, you know, we get this integration and staying in this theory that is just about total assimilation. You know, right. and, and, and I think that that's the message that I'm trying to get out there. There's no problem with diversity. There's no problem mm -hmm. because we just don't want to learn the hot new trend. Like you said, where well, we end up working for someone else. Well, they're right. hiring and nursing is hiring, so right. everybody goes, runs the nursing school. You know, we want to think ahead, but at the same time, never forgetting the long-term yeah. objective. I mean, I, I, mean I, I often end up in a lot of mainstream circles, and I think when you can develop that confidence and that authenticity, it's not easy. You know, when mm -hmm. I, I went to school in New Orleans, it was a mostly Jewish school, Tulane mm -hmm. University. It, you can get swallowed up really quickly. You know, you got two voices. You know, talk yeah. to your white friends. Hey, yeah, what's yeah. going on, bud? Yeah. 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 Right, 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 right. And right. you talk to your boys. You know, you know, <laughs> right. you know? Yeah. so it's no, like, yeah, yeah we, we, we've always had you know, and, and, and think about the complexity of the human mind. But you know what they call to, that, though? No, 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 no. call that schizophrenia, you know, that's yeah. what yeah. yeah. okay. Let call me hold my point, but here's something call I want to raise. Caller, call 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 are you there? Caller? Okay, okay. I'm having a little, might have lost the call little technical then. difficulty Tech right now, but try back in. Give us a call back. Yeah. Apologize. We'll, we'll try to get, get you in. Yeah. Just, uh, please give I'm us a call I'm thinking back. schools, in order to develop this type of... Uh, Hello? Hello, caller. Oh, go ahead. You're on the air. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. you. We can hear you. You're on the air. Hello? Are you hear me? Okay, good. Uh, we are considered... Okay, Hello? We consider the richest slaves on the earth. They need to turn us on in here. We circulate over five hundred billion dollars a year. Can you repeat the question and one more time? We can't Carl. circulate jobs among ourselves. Yeah. What do you say? I think he said we spend over five well, billion dollars a year. Why can't we? Why can't we create jobs amongst ourselves? Still a trillion dollars we spend. Tr trillion, trillion dollars. Trillion. And he was saying, why right. can't we create jobs well, among ourselves? We don't understand. Well, a lot has to do with when you're in the tribe here, in the bucket, Central. We, well, the Gentiles, or, or Caucasians, have been feeding us, clothing us, and employing us since we have been here. Yeah. What we have to understand is, is the white man had the authority to call you three-fifths because he is doing taking care of you. Now, until you can come among yourselves, we have to understand, there is a spirit among us that will not allow us to get together to put together a bag of potato chips. Right. We don't have our innovators no more. They have robbed our innovators. And if you don't have any innovation in your communities, then you will not grow. This is what they're expecting you to do. They're giving you everything you need to grow and do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, we haven't figured out yet why we can't come together. We, make, we, we circulate more money than most countries on the earth among ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we don't do nothing with it. 
king, uh, uh, his message. You better hear his message. The last, the thing he got, uh, uh, don't, uh, don't take this wrong way, but the thing he got killed for was telling you that we must get back to the promised land, we as a people. He left. What he did was he let Pharaoh go. See, oh. That's what he did. Right, so absolutely. We have to understand we have a problem. But I America's house is burning. They're not thinking about you. I We're not on their priority list anymore. So if you can't pull yourself up, then we will not get up. We're Absolutely. not going to get up here. I'm sorry. I've, we have I've, gotten to the pinnacle. We have a sister in the White House. That's Absolutely. our pinnacle. We're going to get no further here. All right. Absolutely. And I think... And, She's and, going down, so we better get ready to get up out Absolutely. Here. And, the, and the doctor... And the, and the doctor addresses that in the, in the book. You know, I think one of the things, read the, one of the one of the coldest, profoundest parts of the book, to me, was the introduction. Right. Yeah. Read the introduction, and he talks about how after the Reconstruction period, you know, how we were up, how we had as, the senators we had, what we had, and how we've digressed from there. How uh, a lot of the laws that were passed by us were taken advantage of by white women, and a lot of things of this nature. So what has happened is what he's talking about, that arrivalism and apathy. Our people have apathy. We can sit here and we can talk about the Pharaoh, Pharaoh and what God is not going to allow us to do, but until we get involved politically, socially, and economically, it's always going to be like that. So definitely check out the book, and a lot of what you're talking about, he addresses, and we're coming in our last minutes, so we're going to let yeah, Chief start to close out. You know, here's the thing. I, 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 I want to try to get it out there, but I'm hoping I'm, I'm getting it out the right way. In order to get that self-esteem that you're talking about, well, we can be aggressive and want to do and, and, and want to change. There has to be a change in our colleges. Yeah, <laughs> you got to get rid of the, the, the professors who've been there for 30 and 40 years, mm -hmm. and this is all they know. You can't, you <laughs> yeah. know, you, 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 you got to remember that. Yeah. And, 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 and even in some of, you got Jesse who's talking about the wealth, the wealth, the wealth. But you see, he got other things hanging on his back, so that's killing him too. But until the schools change their mm. way of teaching, uh, teaching them about self, doing right. self we're, we're not even depending yeah. on the system. Right. We got another call. Yeah. Entrepreneur, another the freedom call. of entrepreneurship. Like, my yeah. wife and I, we oh, home school. Hold on, school. we got a caller. So yeah. we. A caller within yeah. the school. Yeah. Yeah. I'm part yeah. of that home school. And I'm, I'm with that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Caller, are you on? Call I'm you just there? blessed. <laughs> okay. Call caller, on. talk to us. We got four minutes. Got can, four if minutes. you can keep it brief. 100% with what you're saying because when a black person goes in business you can't get support right we, absolutely we, we and we're, you know there's always a remnant right? we to have that. A, a manufacturer of a new natural liquid laundry detergent a black owned business a black owned manufacturer trying to put 500 people to work and can't get any support from our own okay, well thank you. if you thank if you, you come to our opportunity hub one of the things okay. we will do We'll sit down with you once you become a member. We have a philosophy that says you can't withdraw from the investment ecosystem until you invest That's in the ended. ecosystem. Okay, okay, okay. Right. I love And it. we have a lot of people that have ignored the step-by-step -step process of building a business and funding that Doctor, business. Doctor, we have two minutes. Please give us some contact information yeah, where we contact. talk about your... Yeah, sure. Your, yeah. And where we can get the book. Get the book, yeah. please. Well, Thank let me get sure. my book back from Vince. He's Most holding definitely. on to it. <laughs> well, <laughs> if, you, uh, if you like the audio version of the book as well, well okay. you can go to Audible and you can search it on Amazon. Um, you can come by the Opportunity Hub where we sell the book there. It's also available in stores. You can go order it there as well, or you can go to our website, kingonomics.com, and actually order the book there. But I do encourage you, I'm going to give you a website. Next month is Kingonomics Wealth Month, and the okay. theme is Save, Start, Invest. And I'm going to give you the website. It's sign up, real simple, signup.kingonomics.org. Signup.kingonomics.org. All of our events next month, we have over 50 events every day of the month, and it's going to be all free. Mm. All free. Mm. Say what? Now tell at our that opportunity. Free ah. All free. You can't beat free 99. Yeah. 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 It's going to be free. And we've had, uh, we've had Damon John from Shark Tank in the past. Mm. We've had Mark Cuban Fumble. come to our yeah. events. We've had former vice chairman of NASDAQ. We have angel investors, venture capitalists, alternative lenders, and other funding sources in the room 
99% of the businesses that we meet aren't even fundable. They're wow. not even ready yet, and wow. they're not willing to go through the process. So we're going to show you the process on Twitter, at Rodney Sampson, at Kingonomics, and at OHUB, O-H-U-B-A-T-L. Let me know that you're listening today. Send me a tweet, send me a post, and uh, let's make it happen. Dr. Sam, do you think it would be possible to get you back sometime in the future to check on the progress? And this? I know sure. you're a busy man, but, man, yeah. we would love to have we, you back. We'll make it as happen. As well as the Dr. Sam. Yeah. We definitely need a part two to definitely. Yeah. 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 So yeah. need a part two. Yeah. 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 She, it has been wonderful. I didn't get a chance to. She has been a wonderful show. It has been a pleasure. I had a quick question. Oh, we got two. Was there any reason why a certain order that you had the 12 currencies? Was there any particular reason? Yeah, I think the order is actually the pathway, you know, serving people before you expect. I, I, I don't like meeting folks. You meet them, they give you your business card, they don't even ask you your name, yeah, right, right. and then they've got some type of network marketing thing, yeah. and then it's like yeah. if you don't want to come to the sign-up meeting, they don't, you're not serious. Yeah. And I don't but, want to talk to you. Right. It's <laughs> right. like, <laughs> right. sir, you know, can you, what How do can I, I need? You? How can I help you? Right. Right. What are you doing? Right. I've met so many wealthy people just by serving on boards. Mm -hmm. I know you, you know, know, say that a lot, volunteer. Volunteerism right. is, a, is a currency. Yeah, yeah. And then that's how you build a relationship. And then it's about that reciprocity mm -hmm. and then that maintaining that positivity and then taking that personal responsibility, like Dr. Thrasher was saying. Yeah. Then self-image is big. You yes. know, we come from a culture, mm -hmm. unfortunately, of abuse. It mm -hmm. starts at two years old. Right. Uh, go Walk through your Walmart. Shut up. Sit Shut down. Up. We are Don't stifling the yeah, great. Change your baby diaper. The baby's gonna cry because you ain't changing <laughs> right, the diaper. Yeah, Why are you jacking wet. up his rotator right, cuff right, right. at one and a half right, years right, old? Right. This ignorance is being pushed down. <laughs> Let me no, stop. Never enough time, man. I love it. I know. This is never enough time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, this is oh, not Sonia Ray. Thank you to my panel. Mm. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rodney Sampson, to for it. We had some fun. And we are out. And we are yeah. out. Thank Chief for wonderful doing a wonderful Chief, job. Good job. We out. Thank check you. us out, the arena, because I know Dr. we still tip. The arena, check us out, 2013 YouTube. The arena uncensored. Check us out. And uh, get with us, man. We Twitter out peace. Verse. Shout out to my Twitter. man, Black Sun. Yo, Black Sun, this is for you. I didn't get an opportunity to use it. So that, oh, yeah. there you go. You're right. <laughs> I'm glad. Great show, great show. You know.